Good afternoon to those who will listen. It is April 24th, 2018, 4.09 p.m. And I got some more news from Israel, from Isle TV News. Is the, is the Israel Daily Morning Report. Twice in one day, multiple Palestinians from Gaza have just been arrested after successfully breaching the security fence and entering Israeli territory. This morning, two Gazans were picked up almost immediately after crossing over. They were armed with a grenade and a knife at the time. And mere hours later, four more men from Gaza breached the fence. This latest group appears to have been unarmed at the time of the arrest. This is, of course, just the latest in a string of infiltrations from Gaza. And though nothing new, breaches of the border fence have ramped up dramatically since the Hamas-sponsored March of Return protest began nearly a month ago. Though Hamas claims the weekly rallies are merely a peaceful sit-in, Israel sees them as an obvious cover for terror against the Jewish state. Despite this, the army has faced worldwide criticism for its use of live fire against Palestinian crowds, which sometimes number in the tens of thousands in retaliation to firebombing protesters. In fact, these clashes have been some of the bloodiest since the 2014 Gaza War, and at this time, an estimated 39 Palestinians have been killed by IDF gunfire, including one Palestinian journalist and a 15-year-old Palestinian boy. Today's infiltrations are widely seen as an extension of this bloodshed. Still, many Gazans have breached the fence just to purposefully be arrested because they see life in an Israeli jail as superior to living under Hamas's rule in the Gaza Strip. Whether or not these suspects intended to carry out terror still remains to be seen. All right, now we now have a clearer picture of the exchange of fire that we saw yesterday on the Israeli-Syrian border. The mortar shell that landed in Israel's Golan Heights was apparently spillover over from the raging Syrian civil war. But Israel, as a policy, holds the Assad regime responsible for any and all threats to its borders. So in response, the army has just conducted precision strikes on a Syrian military post. The army has confirmed that no Israeli citizens or soldiers were harmed when the mortar struck Israeli territory yesterday. Still, tensions are extremely volatile along the northern border. Russia, Turkey, and Iran... Ugh, oh, no. Sorry, I was trying to pause it right here to show you the... The alliance, the alliance between Iran, Turkey, and Russia, and these are the three countries that in the Bible that says will come against Israel and try to attack Israel from the north in the latter days. Well, there's the the alliance. The alliance uh, happened on April fourth, so it's almost three weeks they've been this way. These are the three countries the Gog-Magog alliance in the Bible. Iran have emerged as partners for Syria, forming a dangerous alliance on Israel's doorstep that could open the floodgates for future war. Russia is reportedly even considering putting an arsenal of deadly S-300 missiles into Syria's hands. Moscow has apparently warned Israel of dire consequences if the IDF does anything to disrupt such a handoff. Israel has carried out a number of operations, some secret, some not so secret, within Syrian borders to keep deadly weapons from reaching enemy hands. Russia has been accused of fostering the very power vacuum in Syria that has allowed Iran to gain such a tight foothold in the region, one that places Iranian militants and rockets within striking range of the Jewish state. Even if a war isn't immediately on the horizon, this is certainly a grim prospect that many in Israel see as a lose-lose scenario. So that's a... Uh... Concerning that Russia has a foothold in there with this missile system there. So Israel has to be careful, you know, when they have missile strikes to not hit these areas. And hopefully a missile doesn't go awry and accidentally hit that thing. Could start a war. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. God bless.